But ladies and gentlemen, we uh, started off a few minutes late, sorry, I guess it takes time to eat food. So we are starting off right now at 3.15 and our topic of discussion, understanding the increasing relevance and preference for emerging technologies in the PFSI sector. We would like to invite on stage Prasanna Lohar, VP Digital in Innovation and Architecture, DCB Bank. Please get your hands together ladies and gentlemen for Mr. Lohar. Deepak Nair, CTO, Tata AIG General Insurance Company Limited. Can we hear it nice and loud for Mr. Nair? Perak Mehta, CTO, Easy Home Finance Limited. Mr. Mehta, joining us on stage. Can we hear it nice and loud, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Mehta? Rishabh Gar, CTO, You Grow Capital Limited. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Garg? We would also like to invite on stage Vijay Vasudevan, CDO and Head, Digital Initiatives, Tata Motors Finance. Please get your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Vasudevan. And we hand over this panel to our moderator, Head Operations and Customer Service, Bajaj Alliance General Insurance Company Limited, Mr. K.B. Deepu. Please get your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for our panelists. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, all of us were, you know, basically discussing outside. It's been two days and, uh, you know, this is the last session after lunch, you know, and I believe some people have already gone back to Mumbai. So, you know, all of us were wondering, right, you know, will there be sufficient audience? And then we said, let's think positively. Despite all this, whoever is in the room, you know, other people, you know, who are really serious and interested. So, you know, with that, uh, you know, hope in mind, you know, we'll kick off our uh, panel discussion. Uh, glad to say that, you know, I have a set of distinguished uh, panelists from five different streams of BFSI. We have general insurance, we have banking, we have SME financing, motor financing and home financing. I'll just request uh, each panelist, you know, to share a brief uh, introduction, so starting with you Vijay. And then, uh, you know, after that, you know, we'll get into the, uh, you know, into the core panel discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Vijay Vasudevan. I head digital for Tata Motor Finance. Uh, I'm new in IT. Uh, I have uh, only two year experience in IT. I'm a business leader. I, I have 20 years of experience in sales, collections, operations, credit, risk, and now in IT. Um, that's one of them. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Rishabh Garg. I'm CTO at Ugro Capital. I have over 18 years of experience in technology. Ugro Capital is into SME financing space. It's a publicly listed NBSC. Uh, hi, very good afternoon. Uh, Prasanna Lohar from DCV Bank. So I primarily take care of innovation, architecture, and digital deliveries at the, at the bank. Thank you, sir. Hi, hi, everyone. As mentioned, uh, I'm uh, CTO at Easy Home Finance, uh, and I have about 12 years of experience in technology. I've done my master's from Carnegie Mellon, uh, worked in a lot of uh, loan companies uh, in India and abroad and uh, now I'm with Easy Home Finance since uh, four years and uh, we, are, we are doing, uh, uh, we are basically doing uh, uh, <laughs> loans for, uh, uh, sorry, yours. I am Deepak, I work with Tata AIG. <laughs> Prior to this, with ICICI Peru and um, work a lot within the company and within the group. Uh, look forward for a good conversation. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I think I got introduced. Uh, my name is Deepu, and uh, I drive customer service and operations at Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. And uh, as I said, you know, happy to moderate this panel. So Vijay, uh, we'll start with you. Yeah. And uh, you know, you said you are new to digital right you've been a business you business leader all along but i guess it's good to see people you know crossing the fence so the question to you is uh, you know how are you uh, in your role leveraging emerging technologies you know to add value to the business i just uh, try to give you a background uh, first see in my opinion or uh, cio and cdo role uh, nowadays no longer a, a technology leader it has to be a business leader uh, we have to front run the uh, front run the business. Uh, so we we are having that culture in Tata Motor Finance, and um, we work very close with my board. And uh, 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 we actually know uh, 
strategies are a digital strategy based on the business strategy. So we have three uh, three uh, uh, three. One is uh, people centricity. People in the sense uh, it can be my internal employees, stakeholders, vendors, customers. People centricity and uh, location independence and resilience in delivery. So this is our uh, key digital theme uh, in our organization, and based on that uh, we started uh, working. So coming to that question, so in the last couple of years we have uh, started uh, disrupting the digitalization in our organization. Uh, we try maximum, we try to use maximum fintech technologies which is readily available, uh, and we try to improve our process uh, to the to the maximum. And uh, so, in the last one year, uh, if you see, uh, we have uh, started uh, implementation of a CRM solution uh, in a very large scale, and then we are uh, focusing more on uh, uh, right now uh, fo focusing more on uh, uh, customer lifecycle finance. So, what is customer lifecycle finance? When the customer is onboarded, and when uh, most probably when we we reach back the customer when in the customer defaults. So, uh, with the use of AI, artificial intelligence, with the use of internal uh, rule engines, so we uh, understand, identify appropriate uh, offering to the customer at the appropriate time. So that's how we are actually now trying to engage the customer throughout the life cycle and, uh, and make sure I retain the customer. Thank you Vijay. Rishabh, coming to you, you know, on the same point on uh, emerging technologies, what's the kind of backend IT infrastructure required and, uh, you know, is the core or the legacy system, is it an inhibitor or is it, uh, you know, an accelerator? So, just, uh, I just start with uh, some background on the lending space, basically. So, we are in the lending space and uh, right now, customers do have many options and uh, to create a differentiation, there are some critical success factors, basically. So, we need to be available 24 by 7 so that customer can engage uh, with us anytime and AI based chatbots make this happen uh, these days. Apart from this decisioning should be super quick. So we do have AI based machine learning models which uh, crunch tons of data and provide good amount of insights to the underwriter to uh, make a decision in few minutes. Apart from this uh, we need to continuously evaluate the customer complete life cycle so that we can raise early warning signals. Again ML based models uh, play a crucial part which again shifts through a lot of amount of data. Apart from this uh, for collections also uh, there are AI systems in place which do which send hyper personalized messages to customers kind of nudges to customer to make the payments. Last but not the least information security is very critical for us and uh, we should always be on the right side of the compliance. So to make all this happen uh, the first a piece of advice I would like to give, we need to imp uh, invest heavily into data engineering. At Ugro Capital, we invested a lot, uh, lot more time and effort in creating an effective ETL framework. And apart from this, we created a data lake uh, where all the enterprise data across different systems uh, get pushed into. And this data lake is being consumed again by all the uh, uh, analytics team to generate uh, the critical insights and our own uh, proprietary uh, scoring engine on which we do the lending. The next piece is we invest heavily into the API framework because you need to integrate with multiple uh, uh, systems in-house and external systems and this is very critical piece. Uh, next is possible go for a public cloud because there are a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, cloud native services which can get you started in no time and it's very cost effective instead of hiring uh, a specific skill sets cloud native architecture can provide all these uh, services in a single box okay. thank you rishabh uh, and for uh, sorry i missed the second question no, then, no, the, uh, second question yeah. that you know core is uh, you know an inhibitor or an accelerator for legacy uh, so legacy <laughs> systems are kind of inhibitor in uh, in going for a full digital transformation so there are multiple challenges with the legacy systems so first challenge is uh, integration with the external uh, systems. So for this, there are certain technologies in place right now. Uh, we can leverage the use of RPAs, 
where we can create a wrapper which can mimic uh, the API front end for the legacy system. Apart from this, uh, there are another issues with the legacy system is, uh, the, is of scalability for which uh, we can have a hybrid kind of uh, uh, infrastructure which can connect uh, the public cloud with the uh, on-prem data center and uh, all the workloads uh, can be moved, so, uh, all the data can be moved to the public cloud and wherever scalability, there is a requirement of scalability that can be undertaken on the public cloud. Thank you, Rishabh. Uh, Prasanna, now coming to you, uh, you know, we spoke about uh, emerging technologies when Vijay spoke. So the query to you is, uh, you know, from a banking perspective, uh, which of these technologies do you see reshaping the banking landscape? Yeah, I think it's a very good question, and Deepu. Uh, uh, in my view, uh, every bank has an opportunity now to become a digital bank. And uh, there are different types of banks. There are PSU banks, there are uh, digital first banks, which has come up in our life last two, three years. There are challenger banks and there are cooperative banks. So technology comes and says that for every bank, you really do not need people or you do not need any of those legacy architecture. So tomorrow, if you have a banking license, you can build a bank with a one click. These are the technologies that are available. Now going forward, how, why banks are looking for emerging technologies, right? Uh, primarily bank operates in various areas, starting with the customer journey, customer onboarding, customer servicing, and after servicing, how do you engage the customer for a futuristic product to offer them? Then internal areas like uh, operations, where we, how do we really do operation excellence at the data centers or a day-to-day -day operation, which typically happens at a uh, card reconciliation or transaction reconciliation, so on and so forth. Businesses are looking, how do we create a new business models on top of that right so these are all the various areas banks operate that is why they look at how technology can be enabled for this now if you really divide a transformation journey in three areas just to support our other speakers first area is typically around the front area right where we are engaging your customers so today we are engaging with the mobile apps right or a, a branch banking or at a internet banking so all of there we can really bring on a AI kind of a technology to create, to create a bi-directional support banking right somebody is doing transaction and on the spot I can give a nudge back to him you are doing this transaction but you are availing for some kind of a loan or some kind of a personal aspiration to save money right so where ai can come into picture or on the front side maybe today we are on mobility tomorrow it will be your variables or your machines will do the transaction that is how we will adopt iot when 5g will come into picture now second area which is a mid area which is all around how do we automate our journeys right which we have designed developed with the several years based upon type of bank so their robotic process automation artificial intelligence as emerging technology can come and enable another area which partnering right so while we operated in within a branch or within a mobile app now banking is become open banking so in second area which is how do we create a front and back and interconnect with the help of api bank how do we safeguard that, right? So there are a lot of other technologies coming to picture. In the back, which is a very, very important aspect for our emerging technologies like big data or AI we spoke, right? Or we spoke about a blockchain. So I think while we are operating some of those emerging technologies like AI, big data, or some of those others are becoming normal technologies, as a bank, we need to see what is coming up, right? Maybe after two years or three years, 5G, variables, uh, these technologies will be very helpful, right? So in a nutshell, just to, if you see at a branches, computer vision, or AI can really help to create a better branch experience for a branch managers as well as for the customer to see his sentiments. At operations, RPAs are very helpful. Going forward, the way we operate our compliance and regulation, which is based upon Web 2 applications. Now, here onwards, we are entering into Web 3 applications. So as a, every bank, they need to see while they are operating today in the current technologies, what is coming in, right? So you might be operating as a for your customers, but millennial customers are going to be on Web 3. So are we ready for those metaverse, augmented reality, which are new interfaces or invisible interfaces? So that is another angle to look at uh, how these emerging technologies, like there are many banks are already started working around these areas. So I think for every bank, it's a, it's a very important to adopt uh, emerging technologies or a set of technologies. Uh, I think that is how, uh, that is how a bank can really shape up in many areas, right? The way we operate, security, cyber security is there. There are a lot of uh, AI is helping in the fraud risk management or adaptive authentication. At an operationals area, we spoke about RPA and you can use OCR technologies, but every technology has its own life. And on the, as a combination of all these technologies, maybe cloud is now normal technology. How are you going to adopt edge technology? It's gonna be a game changer, right? Or a cloud plus API banking, right? Rather, our journey, as Sir said, right? Our journey was an API banking, but 
how are you creating micro services or uh, that kind of architecture on cloud plus is going to be uh, another way to really sustain along with other other fintech so i think combination of all these technologies so called ai ocr iot cloud dlt or a blockchain will be a game changer while this mobility and web will remain there as a interfaces so any bank who is adopting this will have a certainly good edge here onwards and they they can really compete with any of those powerful bank thank you prasanna that was uh, you know very comprehensive now coming to you prerak uh, you know when uh, prasanna was speaking about techn emerging technologies i think one word you know which kept popping up from time to time was ai right and since you represent a new age uh, housing finance company you know what we'd like to know is uh, ai you know has it had an impact you know on the cognitive side of uh, you know processes right or you no know, or has it been you no know, purely mechanical right right definitely so uh, just to give you a brief background uh, 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 the entire home loan industry has been quite paper based since uh, you know the ages gone by so uh, when we started in 2017 uh, we we sat down to understand the current processes documentations that were being taken uh, and we realized that we realized why it takes 2 to 3 weeks right for a home loan to get disbursed because a uh, lot of compliances which have been like not compliance uh, like entire processes which have been going on for years were just continued from one company to the other because even the teams kept jumping right so uh, we finally decided to you know take the entire Uh, system and onus on us uh, in 2017 that we will have to make the system in house with our own processes uh, we from day one itself we were completely paperless uh, we we put in a lot of ai tools from day one itself uh, which included document ai video ais audio ais because we knew that in 2020 if we have to disburse a loan in uh, you know completely digitally and uh, Uh, you know in a very less tight with less processes we'll have to start with all these tools today right so uh, fast forward to the pandemic uh, we were one of the few companies who was prepared that time to go directly to the consumer for digital payments enatch you know document uploads uh, ekyc face match right we had tons of tools already available and now today fast forward to 2022 uh, we have an average start of 6 uh, to 7 days to disburse a loan we are net zero npa company as of 31st march right now all this has helped uh, has happened because of artificial intelligence right it has helped us uh, come so far and now uh, we are going to use this further to you know get to a target where we wanted to disburse the loan in uh, 24 hours right so uh, definitely ai is uh, now gone way beyond just mechanical uh, process it's uh, it's a very very uh, important part of our systems and processes i think entire industry has accepted this fact and uh, uh, going forward i think with all the initiatives even the government ha that has taken bfsi industry is collaborating with each other now right so uh, this thing is getting uh, you know more and more real and the entire mortgage industry is now can actually look forward to a completely digital home loan also being possible just like nbfcs and other sme sectors that have been doing it thank you i'm glad to hear you know the mortgage industry is going digital right because i think when we all took home, home loans you know we realized the kind of huge files we had to carry so deepak uh, now coming to you right yeah. i think i'll have to since you come from insurance right which is where i also come from we heard about emerging uh, technologies from uh, you know vijay from an nbfc perspective and you know prasanna from a banking perspective but from insurance perspective you know how do you think emerging technologies you know play a role across the entire customer service uh, landscape and what are the gaps they help fill you know what are the opportunities they help fill i think deepu uh, first thing you and i are very lucky to work in a gi company you know because we can work with almost every single emerging technology or so called emerging technology i think these are not emerging anymore they are already right here and now right a lot of things we would have already uh, implemented if you say video streaming is it emerging no we have done it right you say aerial imaging or uh, drones is it emerging no it's now uh you talk of uh, big data and you talk of data science it's now it's not emerging anymore when i look at technology and technologies working on it it's almost like we are walking up a downward escalator 
you know, the newer technologies are coming in and we are keep, keep on walking up. If you stop walking, you are thrown out of the es escalator. And there are so many business uh, use cases that are possible with all of these technologies and we should be doing it now. I mean, we should have done it yesterday. Having said that, what all we are doing in, uh, in GI, right? We are working with IoT, definitely, whether it is telematics, whether it is in the health side of it with VAS. Uh, AI definitely for claims adjudication and underwriting decision making, uh, video streaming. Um, during the pandemic, I think almost all the uh, inspections that we were doing, we have been doing with uh, whether it was pre-inspection for car issuance or whether it was the uh, claims inspection, we have been doing 100% of that using, you know, video. Uh, there's a business benefit for that, for that as well. Uh, normally, you would send a risk engineer who is junior to a you know, remote location. But here with this, actual senior guy is able to do a better adjudication using video streaming. He need not be physically present, you know, <coughs> the technology is there. Uh, during CAT events, uh, like the, uh, you know, cyclone and things like that, there are very large facilities that get damaged. So we've used drones to do the assessments. We have been able to cut down from, you know, weeks to days for at least getting some support out uh, through the life cycle of the customer, whether it is onboarding, where we, you spoke of uh, all the, uh, you know, the KYC tech, right? Whether it is uh, a video KYC or assisted or non-assisted on things like that, or usage of robots, the robotic processes and stuff like that, or the customer service where you are using chatbots, WhatsApp, all these things. So. Today in Tata AIG, I think we are doing um, industry leading numbers in self-service. It's about 60% of our entire self-service is done. Uh, you know, the entire service is done on a, on a self-service platform and so is claims. So these three, onboarding, customer service and claims are all supported by the various different emerging techs. Please, President, I want to add sports. Well. Uh, just, to, just to support, right? Uh, every industry, <coughs> example, insurance or banking or wealth, uh, uh, they have their own tech stacks. And they are uh, uh, operating, as you said, ki all these technologies are uh, becoming normal technologies. So what is going to drive here onwards is a customer journey. While he was talking. And customer expects, yeah, I have done once KYC. And I have a one digital identity, so-called Aadhaar or a PAN. I would like to get all my services on some single box, right? I don't want to run around. Uh, for insurance uh, insurance company i don't want to go to the bank for my lending experiences that is how the more power of emerging technology comes okay. so while we have done so many experiments in house now a lot of platforms are coming in our life account aggregator or ondc or ok right so by which uh, kyc done at one bank can be reutilized by kyc at an insurance company that is how a lot of experiments are now coming up. So I think that's how we need to look at in future while we are already adopting emerging tech at house, how at a central level where a lot of platforms are already there, so-called UPIs or uh, uh, PCR is going to come, account aggregator is going to come. So I would like to be very happy like a super app which has an, one onboarding experience and he can avail for banking, insurance and any of the other non-banking services also. That could be the way to look at it. And, and one more thing I want to add. Um, you asked, is legacy a uh, deterrent? I think uh, from the technology that is available today, it's not. I, and, and, I, and I'll tell you why I think that. Think that. Uh, Deepak Jaw spoke of the um, RP as a service. You have a bad legacy system, maybe a green screen. Robot can be on top of that and give it to you a service which your front end can consume. Right? You have all these, I can say the Jugard workarounds available today. So nothing is a deterrent. Yet whether you have a, you know, on-prem infra, it's not deterrent because you can have a front end which is in the cloud and, and, and it can integrate, right? As technologists, I ask you the question, do you think anything, is there any problem out there which you cannot solve? Is there any problem out there which you cannot solve with your ecosystem around? I haven't found any problem which cannot be solved. Right. So if if business really says this is what I want, or or even we can suggest this is what I want, you will find a way to do it. So nothing is a deterrent. Wonderful. I think that's the beauty of this panel, you know, because you're getting diverse uh, and rich experiences, you know, from people representing various aspects of uh, BFSI. So thank you, Prasanna, and uh, thank you, Deepak.
Vijay, coming back to you. Uh, you know, we did well in the first round. This is the second round. We have about 17 minutes to go. So, maybe we'll have just speed up just a little bit. I think otherwise, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, reasonably well on time. So, Vijay, the question is, uh, you know, we spoke about, you know, technology and we spoke about, you know, various aspects. Now, coming to the customer, given that this is the age of digital engagement, how are you ensuring that there are no lapses? And also, you know, from an operational resilience point of view, you know, uh, what does it take in your organization? Uh, uh, one, uh, <coughs> on, for onboarding, seamless onboarding of customers, seamless servicing the customers, and uh, uh, and for every each and every uh, uh, customer engagement point, we have to be seamless and on time. So, from a technology point of view, uh, what we are actually doing is, I, I, I tell you what I'm doing. So, we are trying to identify the process uh, which impacts the customer touch points and uh, uh, we will we will identify that process the systems and uh, uh, set the priority as per the business and we actually know the tag it as uh, three different category platinum gold and silver uh, so we make sure a risk is mitigated uh, and, uh, uh, and this is number two uh, we the, we identify the risk and how to mitigate the risk. And number three is uh, we will learn from the past failures, past uh, past uh, uh, experience. And then last one is communicate. <coughs> communicate to the stakeholders on time. Even if you want to communicate to the customers on time. So we have to keep that entire loop intact. Thank you, uh, Vijay. Uh, the same question to you, Rishabh. Yeah, sure. The question is, uh, you know, given that it is the age of, you know, digital uh, engagement, right? Uh, how are you ensuring that, you know, there are no lapses, you know, when it comes to customer engagement? And also, how are you ensuring operational uh, resilience? So, uh, the account tags are both uh, uh, preparation and financial. So, down times are both financial and uh, uh, <coughs> risk uh, right now. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, that cloud infrastructure, give you a lot of things out, out of the box. So we can uh, we can have uh, the same application running in two different physical locations. If one location goes down, it would automatically switch to another location. So, but problem is that ki, uh, right today, we have more than 50 APIs integrated into our system. Our application, we can have a complete control, but we cannot have control over vendor applications. So we have to find a way for the same. So what we have done, uh, what we are even trying to do, in fact, so we are creating SMS uh, API wrappers over existing vendor APIs, and we are uh, having uh, redundancy in uh, uh, as uh, in terms of vendors also. So for example, uh, if we are using PG, we are uh, we created a wrapper over payment gateway, and we have two payment gateway companies. Uh, so if one goes down, automatically system switches to another payment gateway company. Uh, if, you, if we are using a banking statement analyzer and we created a wrapper on banking statement analyzer, if one of the vendor goes down, when we immediately switch to another uh, banking statement analyzer web, uh, vendor. So these kind of redundancies we need to think through and we have to build it into our applications. Apart from this, uh, we are also uh, working towards uh, creating a multi-cloud strategy basically. So in terms of if, and if there is some downtime in the cloud itself. So we can think of shifting the entire workload to another cloud. So that should be done in a seamless uh, possible way. Uh, if I take an example of the Yes Bank, uh, when Yes Bank went down, so a lot of fintech companies uh, on it stopped working. So these kind of scenarios can happen even even with uh, large vendors. So we need to be very mindful of uh, <coughs> when we are architecting our applications. Thank you, Rishabh. Uh, so, Prasanna, coming to you, you know, a recurring theme in what uh, Rishabh said was about the cloud. So, from your perspective, you know, how are cloud and open architecture, and that anyway, you know, is right up your sleeve, right, in terms of your expertise, right? How are they, you know, aiding this transformation? Uh, how are cloud and open architecture, you know, aiding this entire transformation? Yeah, I think it's a, a very, very good question. Uh, primarily, your competition uh, is with uh, your organization 
are you adopting cloud or not right that's how we need to look at uh, here onwards so see example if you take example of banks uh, while we were operating at a branch or mobile and internet it was silos for your customers but now is the same customer will go to the another fintech company will still look at uh, okay which are the better fd rates okay why some x bank is not there so while at the same time uh, now all of these banks are now collaborating with the fintechs so now the banking is coming out of the bank branching or uh, mobile banking and it's going out to those all of this uh, very good fintech players uh, primarily maybe on a uh, lending side bnpl or uh, fd account opening and so on so forth while dcb bank work uh, cohesively with a lot of fintech players in that angle now coming on the cloud uh, inherently while fintechs are on the cloud we are indirectly directly on the cloud right that's how it it really helps now see example today a bank x which has created a monolithic api journey and for adopting one fintech it takes 15 to 30 days and another bank b or y who is having all this api stack on a cloud it makes sense like adopting within a one day so that gives a lot of liberty because there are thousands of fintechs are looking to collaborate with the banks if you are not on the cloud or rather your api stack is not on the cloud i think it it's a very difficult uh, situation for those banks so every bank has started adopting that kind of a structure moreover uh, within a bank there are quite a lot of applications from which these api comes right so example core banking or internet and the payment stacks and there are many more stacks so uh, as a base practice every stack has to have api first approach and that to on a Uh, microservice kind of approach if it is there as a, for a particular business case right so which is a combination of a multiple apis example customer onboarding could be a combination of aadhar pan or a, a ddu or aml and if you say some of the apis are monolithic some of them are microservices some of them apis are not at all there then it's very hindrance imagine all these stacks are already available on the cloud and it's a sandbox which is available for a fintech to come or test it out fail fast and learn from it it gives a lot of liberty for a for a bank to come up with a lot of a new business model imagine today say example there are 10 banks and five banks are already on that journey so rest of the five will lose out that pie with the next so i think it makes sense that while we are coming up with any of those architectures on a on a kubernetes or a cloud it has to be there on a cloud ready if and even if current developments what you are doing it has to be on a cloud ready so that it is very easy to do the uh, migration on a cloud so i think as well as now new platform which are coming from uh, governments they are also looking at how they uh, like idrbt is a uh, uh, lot of investing a lot of around 5g and the cloud uh, on a lab they are inviting banks to come up and uh, do the experiment so that uh, apart from this current fintech journey how next level of a journey will be on the, on those cloud i think cloud is a normal technology it's just only mindset how do we really take care of all those guidelines and data security protection so on so forth and i think uh, my friends like uh, bhalchandra ganjan is there and we are adopting cloud in that way ki tomorrow if you are on the cloud what is the strategy we should adopt it's just a mindset change do some kind of a poc pilots have some internal champions who knows how to really migrate current data loads on data uh, manage data center to on the cloud and go step by step while your major players like uh, infosys they are not cloud ready although they are not cloud ready uh, but how do you really amalgam that journey is a hybrid kind of approach will come into the picture but for every organization who are today not on the cloud they have to be on the cloud that's how we need to look at it because all these fintechs are always on the cloud first and while we look at uh, next 2 3 years all of your age everything it's beyond the cloud <coughs> i think i'm not sure like uh, there are many legacy banks legacy architecture i think today we might feel that we are operating our banking in a best way but after 5 years imagine those millennials or new customers will go to the only cloud ready experience because there any of those changes crs everything happens seamlessly and as you said there are some challenges that happen with some banks and this cloud journey itself will teach it's not only drdc but you can have a multi cloud kind of approach right so i think that's the way towards uh, the future yeah so thank you prasanna i think apart from the uh, you know the importance of cloud i think one thing which you touched upon which is mindset it's so critical we you know we see various transformation programs and studies show that you know mindset you know can be the deal breaker now coming to you prerak uh, the uh, you know i'm going to ask you the same question that i asked you know vijay and uh, rishab because uh, you know i think your area housing finance i guess touches almost everybody in the room so same point you know from a digital engagement perspective you know how are you ensuring that there are no lapses especially you know in a highly involved uh, product like mortgage right and also from an operational you know resilience perspective because we keep reading about 
markets going up and down you know in this entire scenario right right so uh, as uh, as you like know right so we were uh, born in the cloud right so that solved some of our problems uh, from day one like having good uptime scalability you know going up and down uh, we also started with a good architecture since we were again born in 2017 we had a good microservices architecture uh, so the failure point is not a single point of failure uh, right uh, but however as uh, as also mentioned by rishab uh, we are dependent on certain apis you know uh, government apis also private players also uh, so we have to learn to adapt uh you know up time or down times for these people also so what we've done is uh, we've given alternatives also to our teams uh, that if if the face match did not work if biometric did not work you know go to the step 2 step 3 so we even our employees customers have adapted to this they know that okay i will try two attempts if not then i have given them this alternative uh, we we have to be prepared and uh, also things like you know we also face challenges like poor network in certain areas even today so uh, that time also we have connectivity problems right so we've given them offline features right where they can come to the branch and sync the documents or uh, location tracking everything that we do so uh, we we are we've learned in the last 4 years and uh, of course things are improving a lot but again you know we have to have alternatives as uh, mentioned and uh, similarly we are also uh, adapting to those changes now no thank you uh, peer like i think the point that you made about for example bandwidth fluctuations you know it's a real you know challenge that you know firms face so i'll round it off with uh, you know uh, deepak i need to of course you know we were to at the closing but i want to really thank my panelists because you know they all stuck to time and you know still have 5 minutes left so deepak uh, so therefore you know you can take the liberty of <laughs> not really you know being you know uh, driving the urgency yeah no no i mean <laughs> we have some minutes so the same question that i asked you know prasanna so similarly from a tech and a, you know from an insurance perspective how do you think cloud and you know uh, the entire open architecture dimensions you know are driving transitions so i think uh, uh, like prasanna said you know cloud is something that is not emerging that's not something that uh, you have to think it's already something that you live right Uh, just to give an example, uh, last three years we have not uh, invested in a single server uh, in the data center. Everything that we have been doing last three years is cloud first. Uh, like Prerik mentioned, everything is in the microservices architecture, uh, open architecture, microservices architecture, containerized Kubernetes being used, right? Uh, all the resilience built in. It's like the fintech mentality. or the uh, the tech fin way of looking at things when you are architecting your enterprise architecture or solution architecture to build enterprise applications and hosting them right because if you want to compete uh, and we have taken a vision on us saying that we want to be a digital native full service insurance player right so we compete with uh, standalone health insurance companies we compete with the d2c uh, uh, you know insurtex we compete with full service players like yourself right uh, and the entire ecosystem of of the insurer uh, insurance and fintech right so if we have to up our game and compete at that level you have to benchmark with the right people and that benchmarking at the business has to translate with the benchmarking of the tech with the modern tech you can't be legacy and think that okay i will compete <laughs> you know or or i will uh, I, i'll build an experience which a new age company you know would would be giving so it's like balancing both and transitioning so definitely cloud is is a platform on which you have to ride because uh, how much ever somebody says that you know we will build that in a hybrid uh, hybrid cloud or a private cloud blah 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 it's not going to happen you have the things out there there are lots of partners who help you with that and uh, it just makes sense to be cloud first microservices architect you know solution thank you deepak that was you know very well uh, you know articulated so we have about you know two and a half minutes uh, left want to add something prasad yeah just to support i think once again same uh, i'm repeating same uh, uh, thing like Uh, tomorrow's customer uh, will look at uh, some one interface. So 
So wherever he goes, he want any of those services available, right? And if you say, I will operate it from my monolithic data center, you are out of game. And moreover, there are large scale use cases are coming. Right? You said about KYC, which is going on decentralized KYC. Uh, we, we are talking about digital rupee, although we have UPI out there. And we say, we'll say that digital rupee will collaborate, coordinate with other countries and our data center will be on a, some managed data center, right? So all those angles, so everything is going on a marketplace. And if you are on marketplace, you have to be on a cloud because we never know how many customers will come right now on this spot, right? Where cloud gives that liberty in the back end, as well as there are other uh, favorable points uh, 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 as far as ROI and many other things. So cloud first journey has to be there. And apart from we are on a cloud, there are other technology we need to take care of. So I think that was the one of my remarks. Thank you, Prasanna. As I said, you know, I want to thank all the panelists because uh, they were all comprehensive, right? There was nobody who was like, you know, who had to kind of, you know, cut short his answer. At the same time, you know, everybody stuck to time. And thirdly, I think, you know, we got some unique perspectives because, you know, they all came from five different streams in BFSI. So I think that way it's been enriching. And thanks to all of you for listening to us, uh, you know, very patiently, you know, in the post lunch session. So thank you all. Any, any questions? You need to hold the mic closer to your mouth. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, how are you balancing? Uh, sir, my, myself, Saravanan from Bank of Baroda. I'm just asking, like, uh, how are you balancing privacy concerns of customers with the business objectives? Just to give an example, yesterday I was just talking about uh, term insurance. I got an automated call and one SMS. Within just uh, five, ten minutes, I got it. And one, uh, like, a consumer finance company, like, uh, after the due date, the customer got an SMS that uh, some money has been deposited. Within one minute, that uh, amount was detected. Like, how, how are you going to balance this uh, privacy concern and business activity? People don't take that. Yeah, I think uh, <coughs> there is no, uh, you can't say that I will not, you know, be concerned about privacy or data security, and I will only go with one side of uh, digitalization and automation, right? So it has to be a balance. And it's always been a tug of war. And uh, now the data privacy bill is also around the corner, right? So all of us, uh, yeah. India is growing up to it. India has not been known for a very uh, governance heavy, uh, you know, market, but now it is going to be. So we all need to wake up to it. We all need to bring up, bring our uh, infrastructure <coughs> as well as the, uh, uh, I would not say just the cyber security or the information security framework, but also the data privacy framework. Uh, we don't have a data privacy officer, for example. A lot of, lot of companies will not have a data privacy officer right now. But with the uh, data privacy bill, it will be a mandate, right? What we have done internally is that we have already studied the data privacy bill. We have already seen uh, what is the gap that exists with our practices right now and uh, what is needed in the bill. You will get almost 18 months to implement it. All of us will get once it is passed in the, in the parliament. Uh, it has not been passed for whatever reason. So we need to be prepared and we need to work right now, right? Your, your concern is very valid. Uh, in, the, in the zeal of wanting to do more, in the zeal of opening up more, we have probably opened up a little too much, right? And if you ask everybody's data is lying everywhere. The way we, we exchange data with our partners, the way we send the data to the printing partner or the, or, or the SMSE or the, you know, the communications channels and everything, it's, 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 it's everywhere. All of that will change. There, is, there are companies who are waking up to it. There are IT laws which, which are on our, on our head, but we probably are not very conscious about it. Uh, let me be very honest, how many of us really think of that as a KPI? than what we get our bonus for, right? But it'll change. Things are changing. So you have very valid concern and it's a very important thing to look for. India is waking up to it. India has to really look at data privacy. Yes, with Deepak, it's not uh, only India, just to support what uh, Deepak said, right? So GDPR and, and many countries has, a, every country rather is coming with a data protection draw. So what is happening? So com companies like Google or, uh, or Amazon or Apple or Microsoft, primarily Google. So everybody is now blocking those th uh, third party cookies, right? So primarily by 2030, 
23 every of those big tech uh, or a big uh, gafas will block all the uh, apple has already done so apart from having a country specific data protection regulations these regulations are also now hindering all these partners or all these companies who already own our data through android or ios that's another way to look at it and what deepak said about uh, every country and every uh, set of uh, banking or insurance has their own data protection or uh, regulatory or pci dss those guidelines that's how we work around now it is up to you right from where you got the call and how that company is going to adder that right i think that is how uh, regulation is our compliance is not only now centric to one organization it is going out coming out so once the data protection bill or regulation will come i think things will change heavily thanks uh, deepak and uh, you know prasanna for answering that question comprehensively any other question okay i've got one can we take this last question sir yeah, yeah. hi uh, this is sachin bansode from piramal capital and housing finance so uh, you know uh, the answer could be at personal level from your side whenever so while building any application a business critical application now there are n number of technologies are available so what would you prefer open source or a regular license based like dot net java where you you need to pay a lot right and there are very good open source technologies especially in uh, for databases and all right postgres yeah. and there are very good databases available which can easily replace oracle or but when it's a business critical application what will you select can i depends upon how much capacity i know that that's why i said have. you know you need to answer at personal level you yeah it's a personal be, level right i will yeah. not use feature phone i will use smartphone because i can afford smartphone right <coughs> because it does same activities but there are additional features does come with a licensed product which may not be there open source has its own uh, appetite open source has its own power and i am in favor of both right it depends upon and if it brings to the banks we will always look at those licensed product wherein we have a right support right regulation how do you do that so that's how it works but at the same time we have to keep on do research around open source because today's open source becomes tomorrow's uh, licensed product that is what we have seen on linux or that is what we have seen on any of those products jboss now become right it was earlier it was some other format now it is a, a licensed product so it is makes sense that while you are uh, in a enterprise scale at that to when we are taking care of a customer go for a licensed product <laughs> that's what it is uh, i have another perspective on this so uh, applications all the softwares can have bugs so there is no bug free kind of software if you go for an open source the uh, main benefit is if there is any bug the whole community goes uh, in fixing that bug so bugs are resolved more quickly in open source as soon as they are detected as compared to a licensed software so so i'll yeah. give you my perspective uh, so you want to say something yep so obviously like you know we have uh, when it's a licensed product obviously you have a dedicated support when mm. uh, obviously since you are paying and especially we have seen uh, a few i have seen some examples uh, working with my previous uh, companies that you know microsoft has uh, allocated dedicated resource to resolve a bug or something and as rishab uh, rightly said that you know there is entire community to support open source so again it is case to case basis but i i personally uh, support open source for yeah. certain things but when it comes to financially critical application business critical we have a different object please so, i'll i'll put it like this horses for courses you know as long as you are not putting your organization at risk either risk of compliance which is license compliance right which open source you really don't know which website which fine print to read when right it can change and you might be having a compliance issue later on as long as you have covered there is one area covered second is the security risk who made that open source and whether it has some things hidden from you right as long as you are covered with that it's also fine third is the support risk right are you going to get support when you need it right if these three broadly you can answer in the affirmative then it's okay to go for open source for whichever purpose you want to build whether it's non core core you know mission critical non critical as long as these three questions are answered right 
enterprise class licensed softwares you have somebody to back up on it's like somebody to go back to right i can catch hold of an ibm or a or a microsoft or a aws or whoever it is right why because these three questions are answered by them by default that's the that's the fundamental of it so it's up to you how much risk appetite you have how much research you can do and how much you can be sure about these three risks right the license risk the security risk and the support fallback risk and deepak just to support you if you look at a life cycle of all these products which we are using in day to day life right say example oracle or mysql postgres or jbosses and uh, or these days we talk about in blockchain hyperledger ethereum all these products have a open source community which makes product stronger and that's how it becomes licensed product that is how we have seen life cycle of all these products all together so it is up to you would like to do a research r&d always uh, open source is the best as the sir said there is a community available but when it is come to enterprise same software will be sold as a licensed product so having said that i have both in my estate right so thanks to uh, both the gentlemen in the audience you know for asking two really good questions and you know thanks to all my panelists i think for the first question two gentlemen replied for the second question three gentlemen replied right? you saw the kind of involvement they had i know we you know we would have loved to go on and on but you know the organizers have given us you know a lot of signals verbally and to body language that we need to stop now so thank you all uh, as i said you know for being an involved audience and uh, over to the organizers you know for the next steps thank you all you have been wonderful thank you that was very subtle <laughs> the body language <laughs> all right so ladies and gentlemen once again uh, we would like to introduce our panelists to you we have uh, mr prasanna lohar vice president digital innovation and architecture dcb bank deepak nair cto tata aig general insurance company limited prerak mehta cto easy home finance limited rishab garg cto u grow capital limited vijay vasudevan cto and head digital initiatives tata motors finance and uh, our moderator mr kv deepu head operations and customer service bajaj alliance general insurance company limited